Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the LCS Report. I'm Rob. He's Nick. And yeah, we're back for episode three. Kind of crazy to think about, Nick. But how you doing, my man? I'm good. I'm glad I'm glad we're back. Glad the LCS is back. Uh, excited to get into it with you, man. Hope all is well with you, too. Oh, no, we're doing good over here. And absolutely, I'm excited. Um, it was... It was a fun weekend of League of Legends. The LEC was also really enjoyable. But I think, uh, you know, the most important part uh, was uh, the fact that they looked like the streaming numbers were up. Uh, I saw, like, uh, esports charts had them around, like, 200,000. So um, I know we'll talk about a little bit more later on. But, I mean, I felt like those were pretty good impressions, uh, especially, you know, first week back and probably not everybody knowing they're back on the weekends. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of that, you know, I mean, something I was happy to see was that uh, we were uh, at the arena this weekend. We were completely sold out, uh, sold out uh, well in advance um, for week one, and it wasn't the kind of thing where like tickets were bought and then like only half the people. It was completely full. Like I couldn't even sit down the first day for any of the games, and the second day was full almost the entire day. I think it trickled out a little bit game four, but completely sold out, and it's uh, it's already sold out for next week too. So I think. It's very, very clear that even after just two days, like weekends are a big improvement both on and offline. Yeah. And, you know, I think that that was always going to be the case. I'm sure they just wanted to test it out. Um, you know, I think the LCS is going to be a little bit of a tester league. And, um, you know, I get it, you know, uh, but we're not the LCK. Uh, we're not the LPL. Weekdays are not a thing yet. Uh, hopefully in the future, though. And that's that's OK. But like I said, we'll dive deeper into the changes. Um, I quickly want to do a rundown of the standings. Then we're going to go over uh, the picks that Nick and I had uh, for last week. See how we did. Uh, two teams are up there at 2-0, and Cloud9 and FlyQuest. Uh, then we've got a bunch of teams here in the middle at 1-1 and and NRG, Dignitas, Team Liquid, 100 Thieves. Lastly, two teams that went 0-2 in Shopify Rebellion and Immortals. Looking at our picks as well. We were both able to go 5-3, and three, which is great. I think... Uh, you know, you'll take that, uh, considering especially I was watching the games uh, on Saturday and I kept thinking to myself, I was like, oh, I'm doing pretty poorly. I wonder how Nick's doing. And uh, weirdly enough, we both went one and three on day one, but getting different games correct. Um, I was able to get the C9 NRG game correct with the C9 pick. Uh, Nick was able to get the FlyQuest Shopify Rebellion game with FlyQuest. But then we crushed it on day two on a 4-0 so you know just you know a little a little day one week one madness uh wasn't gonna hold us back nick you know we're both five and three and i feel like we're you know we're two pretty smart guys so you know maybe we'll we'll keep uh keep trending in that direction what do you think uh i i appreciate uh you know i might have agreed with you but uh going into the weekend but after I really thought I had on something with the NRG uh, over Cloud9. I thought that Cloud9 would take a little bit longer to, to gel. And uh, I don't feel very smart after that one, I guess. <laughs> no, no. Hey, look, you took a bold prediction and I appreciated it because I think a lot of people felt the same way. Um, honestly, I even questioned myself after we recorded our show and you brought that up. And I thought about that for a good little while afterwards. Uh, but we'll get into C9 here as well. But they... I don't think they need much gelling. <laughs> I think they're doing okay. Um, but yeah, we'll hop over here uh, as well. I wanted to, we have some of this stuff scheduled out just more to make sure like our picks and power rankings are there so that we can talk about them um, during the recording. But, um, you know, each Tuesday as well, we're going to talk about the game that stood out to us most. And I've got two that are kind of in mind, but I wanted to hear yours first, Nick. Um, which game are you, uh, which game did, stood out the most to you from this weekend? I mean, I think that, uh, the answer is easy for me. It was the first game of, of the, uh, of the season, right? Um, I had team liquid obviously beating hundred thieves. I think a hundred thieves and we'll get into this more later, but I think they exceeded expectations. I thought river was an absolute monster and it was really cool to see sniper, not just pull out the ribbon, but actually successfully execute it. He had a great TP flank that ended yes. up you know, yes. turning the game in their favor. Um, so that was just a really fun game to watch. Um, and I think it, uh, you know, it gave us a lot, it gave us a lot of, you know, good pick, upset, interesting information. I mean, I, just, I thought it was a really, really great game. It was, I was very happy to be wrong about that game, actually. I will say, yeah, I definitely enjoyed that game uh, a lot too. I felt like, um, you know, Hunter Thieves had a lot to prove 
in that first game. Um, you know, as a team, you know, we know kind of the rumors that have been going around uh, with the org as a whole, not just in the LCS. There's a lot of stuff going on with them selling Juvie and um, the game that they were making. So that's definitely been, uh, I'm sure, you know, at, at least in the back of those players' minds and to come out and beat Team Liquid like that was probably very satisfying. My game was actually going to be the C9 NRG game, the rematch of the finals. And it was mostly just because, like you said, I was questioning myself. I was like, man, maybe it is going to take them a little while. Like, you know, they did start off a little rocky in that game as well. And I was like, man, is Vulcan just cursed? Like, you know, he he, he leaves EG and, and now all of a sudden the teams that he's on just can't seem to mash. They can't seem to gel. Then it was like halfway through that game, they were just like, wait, we are the best team in the LCS, spoiler alert. Um, And we're just going to come out and smack everybody. And it was like, you know, they had us in the first half, that meme, right? Like, seriously, the next, if we want to call it three quarters of their games, right? Where where the second half of this NRG game um, and then their their second game uh, against, who am I forgetting, 100 Thieves, you know, they just went off. And they're the team that I think we were kind of hoping they would be. So, um, I don't know if you have any extra thoughts on that one, Nick, but that was definitely, a, I think, an awesome game to watch and already a team that I think we're going to have to be paying a ton of attention to. Yeah, I mean, obviously, with my prediction, I thought C9 would take a little longer to put it together, and I, I didn't mean I thought thought they would go 0-2 this week. I thought that with NRG being, for me, the second-best team behind them on paper and then them you know, returning with a core of 4 or 5 with and who he having a ton of experience with FBI, I thought, I thought NRG – would be able to take it, uh, but it wasn't. I, I mean, it was a little slow start. But I mean, they think they ended in like thirty minutes. Like, I mean, overall, it was a, it was a pretty convincing win from C9's side. Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you, you, you were, you were right about. Uh, they didn't really need much time to time to put things together. Well, you know, uh, a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna have to <laughs> put myself under that category. Uh, but moving on here, I, I did want to talk to about our player of the week. Um, now, we each are going to have different ones, potentially. Um, I gave Nick a little spoiler for mine. I'm going to bring this over here. But uh, I like to use Oracle's Elixir still. I think they have really good stats, uh, and it's pretty easy to read most of the time. So shout out to, to Tim and, and that group over there. But um, the player I wanted to focus on was actually Jensen. I... I'm not a Jensen hater. I've never been necessarily a Jensen hater. I've just always felt that he was overrated um, for what he kind of produced, at least, uh, especially statistically. Obviously, he gelled well with his teams and he would make big plays here and there, but it always felt like, you know, he was just kind of in the shadow of different players at different times. Well, um, I was a little surprised to see him get picked up by FlyQuest. Uh, I thought there were better mid laners out there that they might be able to grab and uh, I'll just apologize now, Jensen, you know, I just, I wasn't familiar with your game. Uh, you know, <laughs> like I, I am, I've watched a lot of you, but I, I really was impressed this weekend. I felt like he was kind of a catalyst for FlyQuest at times when it looked like maybe the bot lane was struggling a little bit, you know, maybe Whippo was still kind of shaking off some of that rust, even inspired was making some weird plays, but it was like, Jensen was like, eh, don't worry about it. I got this. And he just went right in and I think played. Um, some really great League of Legends and kind of reminded everybody why he deserved a spot on what I think a lot of people assume is going to be a, a potential super team. Um, and just to read off some stats that matter a lot to me when I'm looking at uh, mid laners specifically, he's already tied for second in kills and he went 10 to a nine, which I think is pretty outstanding for the first week to dive once in each game, I think is, um, you know, kind of great. Uh, well, statistically, I, I think he only died. I don't think he died at all in one of the games. But, um, you know, I also really value um, goal difference at 10. I think that's, you know, important for a mid laner. Uh, he's got the highest in the mid lane right now. And his 76 kill partic 76 percent kill participation, I think, is also extremely important. If you're in the mid lane, you should be getting involved uh, all around the map and to see him do that i think at such a high level shows just how great he still is so that was my player of the week uh nick who do you got uh i had another mid laner um i had uh jojo pm i uh i mean he, right. it's his his jungler got player of the week for lcs so blabber had a great week week too but uh 
uh, I was really impressed with with JoJo this this weekend. Not because we don't know that he's you know we know that he's he's a great player, but um, you know when we saw EG swap their roster up last year, I mean people forget that before JoJo's crazy MVP summer, he was like kind of eh, in spring. He was getting caught out in side lanes a lot. He seemed to be sort of not suffering an identity crisis, but kind of struggling to kind of ascend to that next level of the mid laner he eventually became in summer. And I was really impressed not only to see him pick that up uh, right away on a team with like, you know, relatively, I mean, he's played with Vulcan before, but still like he played with Vulcan for, uh, you know, a few splits, but you know, it's still a new team. Vulcan's also getting just to do a new team. And he also did it on Azir and Akali, two very different types of champions. And it was just absolutely ferocious on both. Um, so I'm going to have to go with Jojo. And I think uh, we're going to see him, you know, hit an even higher peak on C9 than he did on EG last summer, which individually I would say was his best uh, best performance so far with the MVP award. And also I'm, I'm excited to see to see what he does. I, I, I think C9 won't even end up winning an MVP award this year because they have too many people eligible for it. <laughs> like there's at least three players on this team that could absolutely win that award and have won that award before. And that's what's like, crazy to me is they are i mean they're just special I, I i like already you can just tell you watch their games and even when it looks like they're kind of struggling one person may not have a great game the other four are just so good it doesn't really matter and i think that that's kind of what jack was envisioning when he was putting this team together i you know We'll, we'll jump, you know, we're going to, uh, I think this is a good opportunity to jump into our general thoughts. Uh, we were going to talk about, you know, the changes to the LCS, and I think we'll do that at the end. But I I mean, my general thoughts are that like C9 already looked kind of like the team I was expecting. I know it's two games. It's a small sample size. Things can change. But like, uh, let me put it to you this way, Nick. If this is potentially as bad as they could be, right? Because it's the beginning. They are still needing time to gel, even though they look fine. They're only probably going to get better. We've seen this historically for most teams. You only get better the more you play together. And I just can't see how this team is is going to get worse unless if their egos get in the way. And to be honest with you, I don't know if they necessarily have a bunch of egos on this team. Like I know they have a lot of personalities, but a lot of these guys have shared the spotlight with other players before, um, and it hasn't really affected them whatsoever. I mean, let's not forget as well, JoJo's first split, he was in the shadow of Danny, right? Like, everybody was talking about Danny this, Danny that. And JoJo was still there, and everybody's excited for him, but Danny also had an outstanding first or second split, I think it was, when JoJo came in. So... It's kind of crazy to me just how good this guy is and, and how well he was able to just fit right in and play, you know, we're looking at it right now, but playing Akali and Azir in his first week with Cloud9, like those champs can kind of, I don't know, you 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 can go 0, 4 0, 5 on those champions and look really bad and not mesh well with the team, but I, I don't know. I mean, I just think Cloud9, dude, are, I'm excited. I'm so pumped about them. That's why I'm uh, wearing my Cloud Nine jersey already. For those who already for those who haven't noticed. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll be I'll be the dooms not the doomsday, but I'll be the the devil's advocate here. I uh, Blabber said in his post game interview yesterday that the team does have a lot of ego. I don't think it's the kind of ego that would affect each other as teammates, and I don't see this team like arguing with each other in that way. What I do see is this team flexing out of their minds. And while I don't disagree with what you saw in Week One. Um, and I, well, I think it's too early to tell how things will go entirely. Sounds like a lot of the same language we were using around Cloud9 in the summer when they were kind of victory lapping everybody, and then all of a sudden they lost energy in the finals. So my my biggest concern, I guess, isn't that the ego will get in the way of them working together well, but more so that it will, if they don't have a team to really challenge them and push them to grow, we could see like I would I I they're still my favorite to win to win the spring if I have to pick one right now, just for the record, but. I mean, they were also my favorite to win last summer. I think that's a good point. I just think that there are, I think, at least two teams that can push them. And I don't think that this team's going to forget about the NRG team that you and I both agree are better than the NRG team last year that did beat them 3-1, you know? And so I think that that's, yeah, they beat them in, in, in game one. We all know, like, that doesn't really mean anything. It's once we get to the playoffs and they start actually battling it out. 
Um, not to say that regular season doesn't matter. I personally think regular season is uh, extremely important for a multitude of reasons, but I think that's for another day. Um, but I'm not going to push back on you too much with that. I appreciate it. I sometimes get a little overhyped, but I just, I loved this team as soon as I saw that Jojo was getting, you know, brought onto it and then that they were bringing back Vulcan and instantly my mind went to, this is the type of team that could do something internationally and how much that would mean to this, uh, region. And so, uh, I'm not necessarily a C9 fan, but I am going to push really hard to see them succeed. Um, because I'm ready to see somebody do something internationally. And I obviously will root for any NA team, but I think talent wise, this is the team. Um, and I'm, I'm going to hype them up until they give me a reason not to. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, what were some of your general thoughts then as well from this weekend? What really stood out uh, to you, I guess, just overall? Uh, in terms of like how the games played out, you mean? Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, just anything that really just kind of popped into your mind uh, throughout the weekend. You know, I got my second one. We won't dive too much into it. Just more that like, you know, Shopify Rebellion really aren't that bad. They're not as bad as I think their O2 start was. So uh, we could jump into that in a second, but I wanted to know what, what was another one that you uh, kind of had in mind. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you on Shopify uh, in the way that, uh, you know, I, I think they're, yeah, I think they're better than their record shows. Um, they don't even have their intended starting roster while turtle played this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually thought that individually he looked better than I expected. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, I think team liquid stumbled a little bit out of the gate and it's not something I, think like i don't think they're a bad team or anything like that uh obviously but I, I i was surprised they lost 200 thieves um i do think that uh they may take i thought they were gonna be able to sort of slot in pretty well because it's sort of the same roster formula as last year except now they have a top and jungler who can communicate in english right so i do think it's like same formula higher ceiling but it does mean it's going to you know be you know, immediate. These are still new players coming in. And I still I still see them, uh, you know, as uh, probably my third place team my t in, in the top three. Um, but right now, I would say FlyQuest after for the first week has looked definitely a lot stronger. I don't even say it, not just because of record, um, just overall in form. I thought uh, FlyQuest exceeded my expectations a little bit. Team Liquid fell a little short. But um, I expect them both to kind of regress to more of like an, an equivalent level. And I think both, both those teams are, are pretty close in level. But as far as week one goes, FlyQuest was uh, – FlyQuest came out of the gate really well, given that, I mean, you know, Whippo hasn't played on stage in a long time. Inspired hasn't played on stage in mm – -hmm. well, not as long as Whippo. But still, I mean, that's not always easy to do. But go figure. I mean, Inspired such a strong cerebral player. And Whippo's like a freak of nature even for League of Legends. He has such a unique style that he plays and – the way that he approaches the game, it's what allowed him to be like an AP carry and bot lane early on in his career. It's what allowed him to slot into the jungle successfully. Like if there's one player who's going to come back and, you know, do pretty well, even after a long break, it's, it's that guy. So uh, I was really happy with what I saw from FlyQuest this week. Yeah, no, I think uh, talking about both those teams real quickly, I completely agree with you on FlyQuest. I, I was uh, inspired has been one of my favorite players to watch for the last couple of years. Um, you know, I, I have felt like he is consistently underrated and not talked about enough. Um, so much so that I think we did an interview with him back. Oh gosh, I forget which it might've been the first EG finals, um, in 2022, I want to say maybe 2020. I can't remember. Yeah. It was spring 20 yeah, was when, when they won in Houston. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So yeah, we, we interviewed him. And I asked him like, you know, has it, you know, with, he was on a team with Jojo and Danny and like the, everybody, that's all they were talking about. But inspired was still so good that he freaking won an, an MVP, you know, on that team because that's just how good he is. And so I, I just think the world of him. And I think that that team is going to be one to watch. I still worry about their bot lane. That scares me a lot. I think that they're just very young, not that they aren't talented, but that they're very young. And I think they kind of got, uh, pulled along in this first week, which is kind of what I expected, but we'll have to see how that, you know, kind of maybe gets played out or exposed later on. And yeah, with Team Liquid, I guess the only thing I wanted to ask you ask you about was um, was APA. A lot of people were tweeting about, oh, you know, I'm worried about APA, blah, blah, blah. Like, I watched that game twice, actually. I watched it 
live the first time. Watched it. Uh, I like to watch the highlights um, that night normally or the next day just to kind of re remind myself what happened. I don't really think he played all that badly. I just think that he was on a relatively immobile carry that kind of just got attacked and they didn't really do a lot around him at the same time to kind of take that pressure off. I actually think he made the best of the situation that he had and actually was holding his own decently well in lane. I know, you know, they probably wanted to see him push it a little bit more, but it just kind of felt like he got focused down. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm tired of the APA slander. I, I think that we need to be encouraging uh, his play because he, you know, went from literally being not even in challengers to being at worlds uh, as fast as almost anybody else. And I think he held his own as well as we could have expected. And I think, you know, this is only his second split. Actually, he's technically, yeah, I guess this would be his, like, cause he, he played the whole split last year. Um, summer, right? No, he didn't. Okay, no, I don't think so. He played, I think he played two thirds. Uh, Harry had the first five or six That's games right. still. That's right. No, so yeah, okay, I thought so. Sorry, brain was farting. I needed confirmation, but like he's technically not even through his first split that yet in terms of games. So um, I know he had you know playoffs and worlds, but I'm just saying like we got to give him a little bit more of a leash. I it, it's it's the the slander for him needs to stop for right now, and let's let him play out this split. And then we can start making a little bit more assumptions, at least in my opinion. But uh, I know that people just are not patient in the world of League of Legends and LCS. Uh, otherwise, I think things would be very different as an ecosystem in general. Yeah, I mean, to I mean to be fair, I mean he had a I think he had a pretty strong Azir game uh, on day two, uh, a champion that he previously was criticized for his play on, and something that he didn't seem comfortable picking at Worlds. Um, I w don't want to speak on this anymore specifically just because later this week there will be an exclusive interview from the lcs arena uh with me and apa uh on the gamehouse.com later this week and i asked him actually about a lot of this stuff in terms of his uh you know his champion pool like what is cha his champion pool versus the perception of his champion pool versus his perception of his champion pool and kind of how that's wrapped up into his reputation and and kind of you know like you said, he's he's kind of been thrust into this position and been held to a very high standard, and I think he's actually handled it a lot better than people maybe think. And I'm excited to share, uh, you know, his his thoughts with everybody on, on all this stuff because we, we had a good talk uh, after their win yesterday. And I promise I didn't set that up on purpose. And Nick, you didn't see it, but I did dance uh, on, on this video uh, out of excitement for it because this is uh, technically our first full week of collab and. Uh, Man, I'm still so freaking excited about it. It's freaking awesome. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh to uh you know, like I said, sharing his thoughts. I think he he was very candid about uh the criticisms about his champion pool, a very very measured perspective. I'm excited to share that. Yeah, I can't wait to read it. Um sorry, again, just excited about that, but we'll move on here. Um last thing I want to talk about before we sign off for this episode. I know we said we were gonna keep these 15 or 20 minutes. It's not going to happen. I think 30 minutes is probably going to be the more likely one. So hopefully you guys are enjoying uh, a little bit longer sessions than anticipated. But, you know, Nick and I have a lot to talk about. We're friends too. So, you know, kind of makes it work out this way. But um, I want to know your thoughts on the changes for uh, for the LCS, for the broadcast specifically. I have goods and bads about it. Um, I have one pretty major concern personally, but I want to hear your thoughts first, Nick. What what were your impressions of it, especially considering you were actually there? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw everything as like a. I thought I saw I I thought everything was an improvement. It just I think that there are still improvements to be to be made, like on those changes. For example, like I, I mean, the pacing overall I think is great. Um, I don't think it takes anything away from the game and only makes it easier to watch uh, and and easier to. I mean. Even with with we had a lot of technical pauses, a lot of technical issues this week, and we were still you know out of the arena like before five on both days. Like uh, I think it's 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 definitely it's definitely a a more watchable broadcast. I also like having the uh, the the interview like sort of during the break, like saves more time. I like the player for the interview to be a little bit bigger. Right now, it's mostly the the break uh, the break sort of overlay, and then like a little mini player. Uh, but I mean, overall, I think things are things things were well paced. Uh, you know, I thought the people they brought in the broadcast was good. 
uh, not just, you know, like with like, uh, you know, Licorice and Devlif coming out was great, but also, uh, you know, getting in his side with, with Viper in the crowd when his brother locks in Riven for his debut, you know, stuff like that. I thought that this, so far, this feels like, last year it felt like the LCS was sort of trying like to figure itself out and like just sort of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing like what sticks. This feels like a league that is starting to build an identity regardless of what people outside of the region think of it. And I think that's what it has to happen. I mean, yeah, we're not going to be the best region this year. We weren't last year. And it's it, it, like, and there's been a lot of talk around the ecosystem. I mean, we had two teams drop out this year, but there's no like running from those things. You can only face them. And I think that this is a much more focused and a uh, well-executed product. And uh, just, I, I, I had a really, I had a great time this weekend. And I, I, I hope that, that uh, I, I know for a fact some of the some of the production already has things they want to change and improve. So um, I don't have any major criticisms. I just think that I'd like to see them keep building on some of the things they did. And overall, I thought the pacing was much much better. So I guess my my takeaways were um, just a couple things that were not like I'll get my like ones that were a little uh, less contentious and not exactly related to yours, and I'll hop back over to this, but. Um, I actually really liked the graphics. I thought the graphics were excellent for the stream, honestly. Um, I know that may seem like a small thing, but uh, it felt more personal, uh, yeah, personable with with all the players, and um, you know, it just seemed more relaxed and fun. And and I kind of, I could feel that. It, it just felt really professional. I don't know how else to put it. I just really enjoyed it. Second, yeah, the the stage, the stage setup was so oh, good too. Point. Like with how they used the graphics and just it's I. I thought they did a great job with that too. It's such a better, better vibe there in person too. Like it's just, it looks better on stream, off stream, everything. Yeah, no, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, I think the LCS has to get away from, you know, it was supposed to be this very professional, very ESPN like league. And I'm glad that they got away from some of that. I think I personally like it. That's what I grew up with, but at the same time, I understand why it needs to happen. Yeah, I know you did too. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's what you have to do uh, for gamers, especially, you know, Nick and I both come from a sports background uh, to some extent, I'll say, and we, we, I think we like both ways, which is great. Um, the other thing is, is I, I really enjoyed uh, the pros part at the end, just with Jat sitting down and talking with them. Uh, it felt like a mini podcast essentially, which I really enjoyed. Um, I don't know how many people stayed on to watch it, but um, I do think it's a good idea to allow players to kind of talk. I can't wait till there's beef between two players maybe and they get them on there at the same time, kind of see if they can let that play out afterwards, which I think would be fun. Um, but I did have, and I and I did like the pacing because it was extremely fast. I mean, this was like, like I remember thinking, oh, this is game four already, like, because things were just moving so quickly. Well, I think a lot of people like that. I do miss at least a little bit of something else in between. I don't, player interviews are fine. I don't know that they necessarily are asked very hard or overly interesting questions at times. I personally would rather see the analyst desk break something down a little bit more or discuss things a little bit more. I, I, I really do. Or, you know, things like catching up with double lift, like those kinds of skits. That's what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be, you know, less of them trying to stay on the, hey, we have a game starting at the hour on the hour schedule and more of like them just taking less time in between the games, but still putting something there. It just, you know, with cutting out the draft for the players and everything, I think that that's great. But I, I really did kind of miss the back and forth and maybe i just missed it i i had to watch a little bit casually i had a couple things going on saturday and sunday um so i i wasn't able to give it uh my full attention which is another reason why i went back and rewatched the highlights but like yeah i don't know if maybe you have a different opinion on this but like i kind of worry about the analysts now like they're basically just there for the beginning kind of there for the end they do a little bit of interviewing but it feels like jobs are going to be lost over this and that kind of worries me as well when i really like the crew that they have right now and it scares me just you know kind of thinking forward because they're going to start to realize more and more that like you know i think players are going to be more liked at the beginning of these things you know bringing back like double lift i could totally see him becoming somebody who's a little bit more of a regular um depending on his streaming schedule and everything like that and 
you know, we're not going to be able to have things like, um, you know, with, uh, I don't know, just different guests doing different kind of, you know, sessions. Um, like QG Cinderella did, you know, the baking stuff. I thought that was super fun, but it doesn't feel like that's going to be available now either. And I know that they, they wanted to cut some of that out, but I'll get off my soapbox and just say that I, I do miss those kinds of things. And it feels like there's going to be a lot less of them and it's just going to be game, interview, game, interview, game, interview, and so forth. And I just kind of would like at least a little bit more in the middle. It doesn't have to be a lot, five minutes maybe, but something like that I think would be great. Yeah, and I think we'll I'll see I think we'll see them try some more stuff. I think this is week one. The whole idea is like new 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 LCS, new year, new me, right? Like I think yeah. like yeah, this will probably be the most standard. I would be surprised if they didn't all you know mix up some things or have a different theme for different weeks. You know, um, I do agree with you. I do think it was like a little less heavy on like the sketch content and the a- analytical content. You know, uh, for better or for worse. Um, but uh, you know, if I think I think. Uh, I think I want to wait and see before I uh, before I decide they haven't given enough to the analysts because it's also going to be a thing like, hey, let's get some more data before we really dive deep into these analytics to a point of like where they matter because it's like I also sometimes it's like, oh, well, this team's first, this team's last. I'm like, yeah, there's been one day, you know what I mean? Like, there's a chance that they will dive deeper into analytics, uh, you know, going uh, going forward in the broadcast, uh, especially when they don't have. I mean, we still, we had pretty quick days, and we had like four technical pauses each day, right? So, like, that is true. There is that, that is there is definitely extra time, like you said, and I hope we see that utilized more, uh, you know, more in it with more versatility. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure, and it may just be that I'm an old head, and I enjoy the, you know, I did enjoy always enjoy the older broadcasts uh, quite a bit. Um, I used to watch them when, uh, you know, I was working at another job, so you know, it was pretty awesome that it would take up you know like six to eight hours of, of my work day so uh, you know maybe i'm longing longing for those days but um yeah i guess you know we'll probably wrap it up here in just a second but i was going to offer this to you nick do you have any other thoughts uh that you want to get out here uh, on our tuesday episode i have no idea how immortals is going to win a game but i hope that they can we, we we were talking we, about that we, a little we, bit before this, and uh, yeah. maybe we should say that for next time. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. We definitely, uh, yeah. I worry for them as well. Uh, I worry for that org as a whole, but that's a conversation as well for probably a different day. Um, yeah. But with that, uh, thanks, Nick, and thanks to everybody who uh, is watching. Please let us know uh, in the comments below what you guys think of our power rankings and stuff when it comes out next week but um you know let us know i guess i should said more about our picks uh from last week uh if you thought maybe we were crazy if you think we're really great because we're already five and three i mean anything above 500 is a win in my book uh or i guess if you're gambling you're you're technically ahead i don't know it's up to you but regardless we really do appreciate y'all watching and uh make sure to catch us on thursday but yeah with that we'll catch you on the next one